Hi, I'm a sand recap, and this is a movie to get. King Arthur, Legend of the Sword. Arthur learns his lesson the hard way in the city's back alleys after being denied his inheritance, however, regardless of how he feels about it, once he removes the sword from the stone, he is compelled to acknowledge his true legacy. In the Dark Ages, evil mage Mordred sought great power through the use of dark magic hundreds of years ago. On the backs of massive war elephants, Mordred and his army reach Camelot and begin to destroy the Kingdom of Britain. King Uther Pendragon fights Mordred's forces with his own army. Uther carries his powerful sword Excalibur while riding his horse to Mordred's stronghold. Uther kills Mordred and ends his reign of terror with a single swing. A coup against Uther and the kingdom is led by Uther's brother Vortigern shortly after. In order to transform into a stronger form, Vortigern takes his wife Elsa underground to a pit where he kills her and spills her blood. As Vortigern's servants, the Blacklegs, approach them, Uther escapes the castle with his wife Igraine and young son Arthur. Uther brings Igraine and Arthur to the docks as the villains begin wreaking havoc throughout the kingdom. Igraine is killed when a figure approaches the family and throws a spear at them. Arthur is sent to Londinium, the capital, where he is taken in and raised in a brothel. Arthur spends his growing up years on the streets, getting into fights with those who bully him and getting into fights with other kids. Arthur has made friends with Rubio and Percival as an adult, and he gets stronger and more cocky. Arthur looks after Lucy, a prostitute who was attacked by a group of Vikings before. After the Blacklegs attack the brothel, Arthur is later summoned to speak with a commander. Arthur brought to light a man who had been hiding under a name called Goosefat Bill Turner. Goosefat Bill Turner got into a fight with the Vikings because he hurt Lucy and made them give up their wages. Arthur is informed by the commander that because the king was protecting those Vikings, he must pay for his crime. Along with other men, Arthur is taken and put on a ship bound for the kingdom. In order to resent Arthur, the Blacklegs also kill Lucy in front of Arthur and the other prostitutes. After killing Elsa, Vortigern talks to the sirens who gave him power. The sirens tell him that he will succeed if he kills Arthur and gains sword power even though he does not yet possess the full power he seeks. After that, Vortigern learns that the sword was found in a stone taken from the ocean. As they are forced to attempt to remove the sword, Arthur and hundreds of other men are brought to the stone. The sword slowly emerges from the stone as Arthur steps out. He passes out after experiencing vivid images in flashes and a powerful and overwhelming energy. Arthur awakens in the dungeon of Vortigern. The king comes in and tells Arthur exactly how he felt. He explains to Arthur how, how he can wield the sword and who his father was. However, Arthur must be dealt with because Vortigern intends to hold the power for himself. Sir Bedivere, the former general of Uther, is greeted by the mage. Merlin sent her to assist Arthur. Arthur is sentenced to death by Vorigern. While Bedivere and his men assist Arthur in escaping, the mage conceals herself and uses her powers to summon hawks to attack Vortigern's men. After their previous encounter, they bring him to their hideout, where Arthur awkwardly faces Bill. Bedivere informs Arthur that they require his assistance in defeating Vortigern, but Arthur declines. The others then question whether he can actually wield the sword as claimed. Arthur initially chooses not to fight them even though he is aware that they want him to, until he sucker punches Bill and tries to use Excalibur on his own. He continues to faint as a result of this. Bedivere later explains to Arthur that Vortigern had collaborated with Mordred all along to ensure Vortigern's victory. The Mage Tower, which was once the source of Mordred's power, is Vortigern's ultimate objective. If he completes it, he will be unstoppable. Uther killed Mordred when he gained control of the Lady of the Lake's Excalibur following Mordred's rise to power. Bedivere is offered the idea by the mage that Arthur should travel to the Blacklands, where Merlin had destroyed Mordred's tower, so that he can train to control the sword. As he tries to use the sword to its fullest potential, Arthur must contend with numerous creatures. A rebel named George lends him a hand. Arthur has a vision of the night his parents were killed as he tries to understand sword power. He sees Vortigern in the form of a demon knight as he threw the spear at a grain and engaged Uther in a duel as he drove his son away. Uther threw his sword into the air and let it impale him, transforming him into the stone that held Excalibur and causing him to sink to the ocean floor below after Vortigern overpowered him and nearly struck him in the head. Arthur decides decides to go kill Vortigern once he realizes his father's sacrifice. In order to ally themselves with barons from other kingdoms in their fight against Vortigern, Arthur and the rebels intend to meet with them. In order to demonstrate to the barons that he is someone they can follow, Arthur helps organize meetings with them in the woods 
which involve elaborate confrontations between his own men. Maggie, Vortigern's maid, works as a covert spies for Bedivere. The rebels are informed by her that Vortigern has also met with a Viking baron to form an alliance. When Vortigern reaches Londinium, the rebels intend to confront him. The rebels hide in a tower while Bill watches as Vortigern and his men arrive. Arthur tells him that Vortigern has sent a decoy in his place as he prepares his bow and arrow. Bill continues to fire his arrow, prompting an attack. Backlack and Rubio are injured as the rebels attempt to flee the scene. Backlack remains at the scene and de declares that he will meet them at the safe house. Rubio makes a selfless sacrifice so that Arthur and the others can scale a wall and seek safety in George's school. The school is attacked by the Blacklegs, who force the rebels to fight back. Arthur observes a Blackleg threatening the mage with a knife. Arthur fights the Blacklegs on his own and defeats them all with a powerful sword swing. He is filled with Excalibur's magic. That night, while the rebels are confined to a safe house, house. There is a riot in Londinium. Blue, Rubio's son, arrives and joins his friends. Greybeard, the general of Vortigern, has been following back Lack, directing the two villains to locate and question him. Blue sprints back in search of his father. But in order to safeguard both of them, he must disguise himself. Backlack's ear is then removed by Vortigern to see if Blue is telling the truth. Blue yells at Vortigern to stop just as he is about to end it. Vortigern cuts off Backlack's ear despite the fact that he has confirmed that he is the son. Arthur enters the room to rescue Blue after being asked where he and the sword are. Blue watches as Arthur picks up Blue and takes him away while Vortigern kills his father. Arthur throws Excalibur into the sea because he feels like a failure to his men. The Lady of the Lake pulls him into a small pool after he walks through the woods. She shows Arthur a vision of what will happen if he doesn't stop Vortigern. People will die and the kingdom will fall if he reaches his highest level of power. Arthur goes back to see George, Bedivere, and Percival. When they return to their hideout, they discover that all of their allies and friends have perished. Greybeard is there to warn Arthur that Vortigern will kill Blue and the mage if he doesn't surrender by nightfall. When Arthur goes to hand over the sword and himself to Vortigern, a deal gets the mage freed. The mage summons a massive snake to enter and consume Greybeard and the other Blacklegs before anyone can harm Arthur. After releasing the remaining Vortigern prisoners, the rebels begin their conflict with the Blacklegs. Vortigern goes to his daughter's room, tells her maidens to leave, gives her a hug, tells her how much he loves her, and then kills her like his mother did. He knows what's about to happen. In order to regain his demon warrior appearance, he sacrifices her by dragging her body to the pit. He confronts Arthur after transporting him to a completely different realm. Although Arthur puts up a good fight, Vortigern ultimately triumphs. Arthur then stands before his father in the vision of Uther before his death. Arthur grabs the sword before it hits Uther, and Uther tells Arthur that it's time for him to use Excalibur. Arthur continues the fight and tells Vortigern that Vortigern is to blame for everything that brought him to this point because of his actions that prompted Arthur to fight. Arthur impales his treacherous uncle after destroying Vortigern's blades. As the mage tower falls, Arthur takes his final breaths and leaves Vortigern. Arthur is seen later constructing the round table. While he keeps Bedivere and Bill in his circle, he knights George and Percival. To avoid further conflicts, Arthur also cuts ties with the Viking Baron and his men. The new king is seated peacefully before the Vikings. As Arthur turns to face his kingdom, he is then presented with his crown. Arthur lifts Excalibur into the air to the cheers of the crowd. 